The Nermin was killed on this corner here. Well, I first came to Sarajevo in the summer of 1992, just after the siege began, because I was really fascinated by what was happening to ordinary people in this extraordinary situation. The, the, the exhibition that we're in here is an attempt to, to remind people of how brutal those attacks were. It's, it looks at the, the legacy of Sniper Alley, which was this infamous term for the main street that ran through the heart of the city, which was constantly under sniper fire and shelling, and dozens of uh, people were killed, hundreds were wounded, um, some particularly tragic incident, obviously, that is, is dealt with in the exhibition of, of Nerman Divovich, who was a young boy who was killed by a sniper. Uh, the sniper bullet passed through his mother's body, wounding her badly, and then entered into his body and killed him on the 18th of November 1994. And that was right in front of a UN uh, armoured personnel carrier that was supposedly protecting them from, from sniper fire. So the, 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 the civilian population here was incredibly vulnerable and was in fact terrorised by the Serbian forces that were besieging the city. The war in Bosnia and Herzegovina killed more than 100,000 people and forcibly displaced more than 2 million others. It was the bloodiest conflict on European soil since World War II. I am Vedran Drljevic, civil victim of the in Bosnia and Herzegovina from 1992 to 1995. Ranjen sam u olimpijskom naselju, općina Novi grad, Sarajevo, krajem oktobra 1993. godine, kad sam imao samo deset godina. Padne granata, negdje u daljini čujem detonaciju i mislim, prošlo je najopasnije i nastavljam ja ovdje ovaj, da se igram sam, čekajući tu dvojicu prijatelja, oni se u međuremenu pojavljuju i mi čujemo da je ispaljena još jedna granata. Misleći da će opet negdje eksplodirati dalje od nas, ona je tačno ovdje iza nas, nekih 50 metara, pala strašna detonacija i počeli smo trčati prema ovom haustoru iz prepadane od te detonacije i od tog adrenalina ja nisam uopšte znao da sam ranjen. Dok mi ovi prijatelji nisu počeli blijedi govoriti ranjen si, ranjen si, tu u prijedelu vrata i ramena. Došao je moj brat i onda smo me odveli u Dobrinsku bolnicu i tu sam imao operaciju. Tu sam se nagledao svega i ranjenih i mrtvih ljudi Operacija i jauka, i sad su mi te scene ovako vrlo svježe, dobro se sjećam toga. Poslije sad i po operacije su mi rekli da se ne može izvati geler, da će ostati u meni dok se rat ne završi pa će onda probati. Evo, 27-8 godina poslije taj geler je još u meni i podsjećam je ovako kad je promjena vremena, podsjeti me na tu 1993. godinu. Fighting was brought to an end on December 14, 1995 with the signing of the Dayton Peace Agreement. But for victims of the war, wounds haven't healed 27 years later. I tek sad iz ove perspektive kad vidim djecu koja su sretna, hvala Bogu u miru, onaj vidimo šta smo propustili. I ubijeđen sam o to da smo oštećena generacija. Danas kad gledam neke svoje prijatelje koji su prošli slično, onaj, oni, oni onaj, imaju teške živote. Teške živote, to neko naziva PTSP, taj dječji ili ne znam, odrasni koji su direktno učestvovali u ratnim sukobima, su jako oštećene generacije. The, the way the war ended, you know, it didn't end, nobody won the war in Bosnia. Um, and unfortunately the Dayton settlement, it ended the war, but it ended the war in a way that actually reinforced uh, the successes of ethnic cleansing and, and genocide. It kind of effectively rewarded genocide because the Republic of Srpska is founded on, on the deaths of, of, of hundreds of thousands of people and the expulsion of people from their homes. And that's almost set in stone in the Dayton Agreement. And that's one of the, the great sort of tragedies in the, of the legacy of the end of the war here, that the political system written into the political system is ethno-nationalism. Many of those who were involved in establishing Republika Srpska in the early 1990s were later convicted for genocide, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity by a UN tribunal at The Hague. One of the men who negotiated the Dayton Peace Agreement for the Bosnian government, Ivo Komšić, warns of growing similarities in tensions between then and now. We have war politics, stranke iz Republike Srpske na čelu sa SNSD-om koji negiraju Bosnu i Hercegovinu potpuno 
i u svim tim pregovorima oni bi bili zato da Bosna i Hercegovina nestane. Dakle, da se sa zelenim stolom uništi Bosna i Hercegovina, pobriše Bosna i Hercegovina. Ono što oni čak nisu mogli ni ratom urati bez obra na zločine koji su napravili. S druge strane, sa hrvatske strane imate također taj problem što se aktuelna politika HDZ-a ovdje u Bosni i Hercegovini nastoji da obnovi Herceg Bosnu, da dobije da se formira ovdje treći entitet, dakle da Bosna i Hercega ovakva kakva jeste sa dva entiteta ide u danju podjelu zbog ti ciljeva njegovi ratni i došlo je do Daytona kao mirovnog sporazuma, jer mirovni sporazum je to zapravo sve anulirao. U Daytonu nema Karadžićeve Republike Srpske, nema Herceg Bosne. Most recently Bosni and Srp politicians from the entity of Republika Srpska pulled out of all state institutions, blocking urgently needed reforms. Politički predstavnici Republike Srpske i Srba u predsjedništvu, u Savjetu ministara i parlamentarnoj skupštini, odnosno oba dvoma, neće učestvovati u radu i odlučivanju, dok se ne sjede i vidi na koji način se su prosto u tome inulirati ovo. They're demanding that a law imposed by former international official Valentin Insko forbidding the denial of genocide, be annulled. If you go through Eastern Serbia, if you go to somewhere like Bratun, that's there's still a lot of hostility and a lot of open celebration of, of convicted war criminals, and that cannot be allowed to continue. Genocide denial is a, is a crime any, in any civilized country. You know, imagine if in, in Germany now somebody started painting murals of Himmler and Hitler and Goebbels and, and celebrating them as, as national heroes. Of course, it would be completely outrageous and people would, would, would ban it immediately and people would be arrested. So it, it shouldn't be a question of genocide denial being an issue in Bosnia. Bosnian Serb leader Milorad Dodik has continued to mock state and international institutions. He celebrated Republika Srpska's Unity Day in January with a military parade, attended by representatives of the Serbian Orthodox Church and government, the Russian ambassador and the Chinese envoy. The day was ruled unconstitutional twice by the country's top court, and its commemoration caused enough concern for a visit by American official Samantha Power after new U.S. sanctions were imposed on the Bosnian Serb leader. Leaders here are attempting to sow division and are not sufficiently focused on the challenges that affect the lives of ordinary people. President Dodik in particular has created a climate of tension, one that is vulnerable to miscalculation and the risk of escalation. But the source of tension is not just nationalism, it's also structural. Political blocs with a Bosniak Muslim majority are disunited and don't have the capacity to provide continuous governance without coalitions made up of Bosnian Serb and Croat nationalist parties, leaving the country in a constant state of negotiations and the lives of regular people in a constant state of limbo. The political leaderships are sadly not all of them, but many of them very corrupt. Um, and they're using the smokescreen or the mythology of, of nationalism and ethnicity and religion to stay in power and so they can continue to exploit the resources of the country with their cronies. And where nationalism blooms, corruption shines. Bosnia and Herzegovina is ranked 110th most corrupt country in the world out of 180 nations. It also suffers from a brain drain of its most skilled and talented workers who are leaving, not just to seek jobs, but who are fed up with the same fruitless political cycles ever since the war. Samir Seifovic, TRT World, Sarajevo, Bosnia.